We are thrilled and it more than welcome uh, that Francis uh, and Sir Carl have agreed to do this for us because it's a very, very important thing that they're supporting, which is our principals fund, which is to help students who otherwise wouldn't be able to come here to be able to come here. I'm being sculpted by Francis Segelman today, which is a fantastic adventure for me. First time ever. I've come for this special event before, uh, for the charity of the Royal Academy, which is a charity and it needs funds. So I think we have a couple of hundred people coming and um, uh, some music being played, some music of mine. Um, so it'll be hopefully a, a good occasion. Carl Jenkins is one of the finest living composers. Knighted, I think, a couple of years or so ago, Sir Carl Jenkins. Every year, we ask our listeners to vote for their three favorite pieces of music, and I can tell you that as things stand at the moment, Sir Carl is the most popular living composer in the world. Well, I applied and uh, I did my initial music degree at the University of Wales in Cardiff, which had a very strong music department. Um, so I wanted to do some postgraduate studies. I wanted to come to London, so I applied to the Royal College and here. Um, I was accepted here initially, and so I took the place here. I kind of moonlighted as a jazz musician when I was here quite a lot. I've played at Ronnie Scott's Club and places like that. So I, I, I always had dual pers musical personality in that. I was classical, and, but I was always, I loved jazz a lot as well. I loved classical music, you know, and I couldn't get enough of it. But when my father passed away, I couldn't listen to it. And then in 1995, I heard this music on the radio and it was Carl's music, and I just adored it, because it didn't remind me of anything. It was sort of classical, but not classical, and it was very, very inspiring for me. When I first heard it on the radio, I thought, who on earth, what is, is this some medieval British composer? He has such a distinctive style. He's un classifiable. You can't say exactly what his music is, but somehow the moment you hear it, you know, oh, that's Carl Jenkins. Royal Academy is quite a venerated institution. It's one of the great conservatoires in the UK. The Royal Academy of Music is the UK's oldest conservatoire. It's the second oldest conservatoire in the world. And we are about helping people become great musicians. The Duke's Hall is uh, part of the original building. You can see there's a lot of different parts. Uh, 1911, the building was actually designed and built specifically for the Academy, and the Duke's Hall was the original concert hall, and it's where most of our orchestral and sort of large-scale concerts take place. Tonight, there are a number of musical performances. Uh, there's a young pianist, Harry Rylance, who's playing at the moment, but most of the performance is going to be done by the Sainsbury's Royal Academy soloists. Which is the cream of the, of the players here, um, violin, violas, cellos, double bass, small group, and also Lucy Crowe, the eminent soprano, who came here and does the Royal Opera here and, uh, and met in New York. Well, I think Sir Carl's face is, must be a great one to sculpt because he's such a, a distinctive personality and his mustache is, is so distinctive. So I think in many ways, I can see exactly why Francis would want to sculpt him. No one has a mustache like that anymore. To call it a walrus mustache from the 60s, it's a bit of an understatement. He's instantly identifiable by it. And I suspect as a sculptor, she will go straight for that and make sure she gets that right because once you've got that you've kind of got Carl and then the rest follows. I don't know how you sculpt with an audience wandering around talking um, and the speed with which she is doing it at the moment is quite astonishing. I can't imagine uh, being a sculptor under this kind of pressure. I always imagine that sculpting is something that you do in peace and quiet and we were all sort of completely mesmerized by Frances when she said what her technique was. I've always thought of sculptors as being kind of shut away in their studios, spending hours, days, weeks creating the perfect sculpture. She can capture a likeness in a matter of two hours. It's quite extraordinary. Something happens while I'm doing very fast sculptures. I'm focused on positive thoughts and just something comes out, something part of their character comes out.